All right, guys, welcome back to the Rick Shields Golf Show podcast, episode 208. I'm your host, Rick Shields. I'm here with co-host Guy. Um, we've had a busy, bloody week. Mm. It feels like what we're excited about talking about on the podcast today is a proper like behind the scenes of what's about to come on the channel very soon. Yes. Um, do we start with the golf balls? Because you tried some golf balls that are very, very intriguing, and people listening and watching this podcast will see that video this week. Yeah. Could they change golf? Yeah. Wow. So there's some golf balls that I've tested this week, uh, or last week, the video's coming out, like Guy said, tomorrow. Um, and they're, they're quite, well, they're very expensive, to be honest with you. Um, more expensive than Pro V1. And the claims on the box, and, and a lot of brands claim the better than the Titleist Pro V1, etc. For the first time, possibly in history, there might just be a ball that actually lives up to said claims. Wow. So I, actually, I also played with that golf ball. You did? on a video break 75 coming up very soon um and, and actually golfed that ball pretty well <laughs> i'm not a fan of the term golf i know i hate well, do it you, do you golf <laughs> no i play golf no but the thing this it's a bit of a broad we've gone quite into this podcast quite we quick have, how's your weekend it's been busy it's been a bit hectic um i'm still kind of licking my wounds now that i'm a super hardcore football fan again, again from august to december <laughs> then you quit before I fully know we're out the title race, it was obviously the Manchester Derby and United got absolutely demolished. I watched the match. I actually went to Old Trafford a few hours before kickoff and took the kids to the Superstore because we were watching a, a play locally. Long story short, we walked to Old Trafford. My little boy, like my, my eldest girl, and we're there walking and it's like, come on, this is it. Like This is Old Trafford. Look at it. Look at it. And you're actually looking and you go, oh, it does look like it needs a lot. It needs knocking down and starting yeah, again. Yeah, well, I won't be opposed to that. Um, but what was really nice, got to go and, and um, go to the Sir Bobby Charlton tribute. That was really nice. Obviously, the kids didn't really have a great deal. And, and to be honest, bar watching clips on social media, we didn't live in Sir Bobby no, Charlton's era. All. So I don't really know how great he was. But uh, when you... Enemy, the, one of the best ever. One of the best English players ever. When you actually read the accolades and look at the, the how highly recognised and respected he is uh, uh, amongst his peers, it was really fitting just to go to his tribute and just to be able to kind of see the love outpouring from the United fans. Went to the Superstore. Yeah. Ended up buying um, football shirts. And in a week... Now, everyone in my family, bar my wife, who will refuse to wear one just because she's not really into football. Now, me, which we'll come on to in a minute, and my three kids all have official red Manchester United shirts. Do your kids know that, man, you're rubbish? Yeah, no, not yet. Do they know that Man City beat them 3-0? Uh, yeah. Do you not feel harsh, like, making your kids support a, a team little bit. that are rubbish? Let them support City. No. You're a glory hunter. You should allow that. No. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a die hard. <laughs> Cut me and I bleed red. I think that's well, that's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's funny because one of my little boy's teacher at the moment is a, is or teacher from last year was a big city fan. And he kept coming home. Can I get a blue kit, Daddy? And I'm like, No, we don't have blue kits around here. So anyway, I've I've hopefully at the moment managed to brainwash them until they realise that yes, Manchester United aren't the team that used to be. But until that point, they're in red, and not only. Are all my kids now Red United shirts? Last week, as a team here at Rick Shields Media, we actually participated in a. I don't want to call it a tournament because that makes it sound too. Well, it was just us <laughs> playing, so <laughs> it, wasn't a, it wasn't a tournament. There was ten of us in the business, and we did a five versus five, five aside. football match. We call it five aside us footballers. Five right? versus five. I like to, from the, you know, I'm just catering for our US fans. Right, okay, Soccer. five, five v five, um, and it was good, wasn't it? It was good, but there was two things that I have to point out. Firstly, and I did preempt you with this before we played football. My uh, soccer skills are horrendous. I would say my handicap. I, I've never broke a hundred. Let's put it that way. I've never broke a hundred <laughs> no, in I golfing think, terms. I think you. I think you're mid twenties. Mm, I bet absolute best. I think I'm eighteen. At absolute. You best. talked a good game beforehand. Yeah, but I just need to get into and it. You were, you're okay. I'm, I, we, we're back again tonight. We're playing again tonight. So I'm yeah, ready for this. But, the, the but then there's a lot of like, like Matt who's the podcast Matt, who's back to this week, who literally doesn't like football one bit. He's like a single figure handicapper. Yeah, but he's very fit, so he can just run around, and he, yeah, he's good. He's annoyingly good. You got a horrendous blister. Yeah, so I had to play uh, football in golf shoes. 
Um, <laughs> I got some boots on the way, which I'm happy to say, but my fitness was horrendous. I'm okay at running like a, a medium to slow pace for okay-ish ish distances, not far. But football fitness is another thing and I'm very stiff still a week later and I'm kind of, in a way, looking forward to playing later on, but I'm also not. You'll be fine. Yeah. It'll, it'll help you get rid of your stiffness. The, um, <laughs> I bought a football shirt as well and I couldn't believe how expensive it was. Because you went and got standard Rick Shields. You didn't buy the normal one that the, the normal people get. You got the player's edition. I didn't even know the difference. It's long sleeved, granted, because I, I felt like I looked a bit cooler in long sleeved. Um, £120. For, not, not the shorts and the socks. It's outrageous. I bought them this weekend but, at the Superstore. But just for the long sleeve <laughs> shirt was £120. It is. It's obscene. And again, it kind of leads us back into that, that topic we're talking about, these LA golf balls. Everybody knows that golf is expensive. Football's expensive. The whole world seems to be expensive these days. But golf is known as an expensive sport. But every now and again, a brand comes around, which I don't mind this, actually, that charges a fortune for something. And I think... It's hard to, to get into our heads sometimes because I would never pay $70 or 60 odd quid for a dozen golf balls because I'm going to lose them quite quickly, let's be honest. And I know that deep down the performance might not be much better than the Pro V1, if any better. However, there are people out there who drive nice cars, who wear very nice watches, who have the best of the best, and they don't want to be seen on the tee with Titus Pro V1. They want to be seen with something that's a little bit different, and that's what these LA golf balls are. That's who I would imagine they're going to cater for. You've tried them, as we said, that video's coming this week. Can you give the audience, the podcast listeners, a little bit of an insight into these golf balls? They who are LA golf? LA golf, really. <clears throat> they're known for making shafts, mm -hmm. is, their, is their kind of big story. And very expensive high-end putters, mm -hmm. the LA golf putters, like six hundred pounds, seven hundred pound a putter. They've looked at launching a golf ball. I, I've I've seen it being teased probably since Christmas time, probably Christmas last year, New Year mm -hmm. time. I've seen them being teased and thought, ah, oh, they're just going to be another kind of nothing golf ball. I can't imagine they're going to do very well. Um, honestly, 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 very impressed. I don't want to give too much away. The only thing I will sprinkle away is the claims on the box, which are often from brands can be quite fabricated, mm -hmm. are pretty truthful. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's solid for any, any golf ball manufacturer. From the claims on the box, I found them to be fact, if not slightly better than fact. <laughs> and on the flip side of the coin, which you alluded to as well, we on Friday played a golf course that value for money-wise, I hand on heart, do not think anywhere that I've been to, certainly in the UK, gets close to. No, this is a this is a golf course that's been kind of blowing up a little bit over social media. Um, so golf digest. So there's a, there's a, an artist by the name of Joe. He's a, he's a UK guy. I think I believe he's a member Royal uh, Hoylake, uh, Royal Liverpool. I've actually. Um, in the past, bought a little bit of artwork off him. Um, it, he's called Joe McDonald. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. And he does these really cool three-dimensional um, prints of golf courses. And you can have it framed. And it looks like a 3D picture, but it's not it's flat. And a couple of weeks ago, he went over to this golf course called Dunstanborough. Dunstanborough. Dunstanborough Castle Golf Club in Northumberland. And he posted that this is the best value golf course in the world. And it blew up all over social media because the pictures and the video clips that you see, you can't argue, it looks like King's Barnes. Yes. But in Northumberland. And on a weekday, I think it's £28. On a weekend, it's £31 for a visitor. You heard that correctly. £28 in the week, £31 at the weekend. Yes. And so we thought, you know what? While strike while the iron's hot mm. before the green fees triple or <laughs> quadruple, which I've, we've been told by the owner and used to be head greenkeeper, Stu, that that's not the case. They're mm -hmm. going to stick with that green fee. We drove all the way over there, three and a half hours, and we played the golf course. And it, it the weather was horrendous last the night before. Yeah. There was puddles everywhere. Yeah. But even with all that happening... I don't want to give it again too much away. We can give a bit of the way the course, but not maybe the how we played. Because it it was one of the most spectacular golf course I've ever played. Yeah. Like <laughs> for £28. And it's possibly the first time I paid for a green fee in maybe eleven years. So I actually paid the £28 you green did. fee. Um 
because I just thought, you know, well, not just because I thought, because <laughs> they made me. They demanded it. <laughs> no, I felt like, you know, it, it was part of the, obviously the story. Well, I think as well, yeah, obviously, jokes aside, we're very fortunate that I only really play golf now when we're filming videos. And obviously you play golf really only when we're filming videos. So luckily, and I think most people know, obviously you're a PJ pro, so you don't really have to pay to play a green fee anywhere. And certainly when we're filming, golf courses often want us to go. And obviously I'm fortunate that I don't pay either when we're playing for, for, for camera, uh, for, for video. So you do sometimes forget, and it sounds ridiculous, but what it's like to pay. And also when you do pay for something, whatever that thing might be, you want it to be good value, obviously, don't you? I think you're a little bit more critical well, you, almost. And as you should be. If you've like, paid. I was almost looking for faults. Yeah. I was like, S something's going to be wrong here. Because it, it was honestly, for £28, could we played in the midweek, which is still £31 a weekend, it doesn't make a difference. But it honestly, I, I was I was taken away. And Matt, um, who who was out on the shoot with us, he did some drone footage afterwards and he sent it to us as we were driving oh, back home. Absolutely outstanding. I actually sent it to Stu, the the uh, the course, the owner, and he was like, oh my, they're like the best picture I've ever seen. Honestly, they're absolutely spectacular. It was it was incredible. And actually, the video itself, which will come out in probably a couple of weeks, will show a lot more of the golf course and how we played. And realistically, though, there weren't many cons. The only con you could say, it's not the golf course's fault. It is kind of in the middle of nowhere for a lot of people. But if you're ever going up that neck of the woods... But I do think there's some really nice courses well, near exactly. it. exactly. So you could go up to Newcastle and kind of make your way up there. But... Again, going back to that golf ball, I think there is a place for things in golf being expensive. And that doesn't mean that I want everything in golf to be expensive. Obviously not. I want golf to be accessible and people can go to Sports Direct and buy a cheap driver and go and try golf. But anywhere where there's a business, there's going to be people who have different part, part, um, points kind of in the market. So again, with cars, you can go out and buy a second-hand old Ford Fiesta for 500 quid. Or you can go and buy a Bugatti Veyron for $4 million. There's, there's different price points. It's a bit like, like even me getting back into football. Like I've gone out. <clears throat> Luckily, I had some boots that I had from back in the day. Yeah. So, but they would have cost me probably ninety quid at the time. Spent fortune on a football shirt, shorts, and socks. Now I've spent way too much just to get back into football. But you don't have to do that. You go in your golf shoes like I did, like you <laughs> and rip your feet to shreds. Like sports, uh, pretty much every sport does have different entry level points. I would agree, golf is possibly the the one that has the entry level at the probably highest price point. Yeah, because you do need some level of equipment and you do need some level of clothing, etc. But you can still go to, down to a driving range and actually just hire clubs and, and get a bucket of balls and whack them away. But I think what I would say as well, though, and we've proved this in many different tests, is that realistically, with golf clubs in particular, it's not always a case or balls that the more you pay, the much more benefit you get in performance. So, for example, a hundred pound driver versus a five hundred pound driver. Yes, there'll be some difference, but not five times the price no. difference. But with golf courses, you can get some that are very expensive because of the name. But typically, I think it's fair to say, if you get a very, very, very cheap green fee somewhere, certainly in the UK and in the winter, the condition of that golf course won't be anywhere near as good as an expensive Lynx course. That's just a fact, isn't it? But I think this golf course, Dunsonborough, kind of proved that actually there's a very, very, very reasonable price green fee, but you weren't then getting a okay golf course you were getting i mean genuinely now those parts on that golf course there were some holes where i was thinking this is quite literally you won't get many holes in the world better that par four was it 11 maybe was it the dead straight the one dead straight one yes that was it um, was 11 or no, 10. 13 was the par three so 13 it was 12 the 11 10 yeah 10. 10 that hole honest to god could be anywhere on the planet and if you were on turnbury or anywhere and that was your next hole that you arrived on it would not look out of place. No, it would It would look, at, like say, Kings Barnes is one of my favourite golf courses in the world. Trump International in Aberdeen is one of my favourite golf courses in the world. That hole and, and a stretch of them, four or five in that corner, you're right, could have easily just oh. slotted into those two two and venues. I think just on that as well, the clubhouse from the outside, and I, I know I won't, I won't be around the bush, didn't look much. It was quite small. I'm not sure what this is going to be like. We went in. It was small, but it was really nice inside. They had... Um, great staff there was a great selection of food that was right up my street we're talking lasagnas chicken burgers <laughs> chip balms you name it um even like little things like they had a nice it sounds silly this but they had like a really nice toilet they had like a nice changing room that was getting done up and stuff and you think you could go there the group of mates and have an absolute Crush great head. time and for me there's nothing better than going to a golf club and forgetting the course for a moment but the actual club and the clubhouse and feeling like 
that it's it's nice to I hate nothing more than a really stuck up clubhouse where you're not sure what you can do and that's I don't like that personally. There's some places you go to very historic links courses, maybe open venues where you kind of expect a bit of that and it's kind of part of the tradition to a degree and it's I can tolerate it occasionally, but there's nothing better than that. Like for me, anyway. Yeah, it was very. It, they were very, very welcoming. But even like you know, obviously, we had a wonderful experience at Muirfield this year. Yes, like that is very, very prestigious. You have to wear a suit, and but also on the flip side, it didn't feel stuffy. No. I know we mentioned that on the podcast. It was actually really quite chilled and relaxed, and and it felt welcoming, just in a different way. Yeah, like <laughs> Dunsterborough. Near enough. Well, it's done. I think it's done. It's Dunstan, so it's done. <laughs> Dunstanborough. Yeah, or Borough. Dunstan Borough. Yeah. Golf, Castle Golf Club. Kind of had that really welcome, warming, like, toasty vibe. Like, even that, when I think of it now, I almost warm up inside, yeah. like, I like to say, but it, but it was much more chilled. It was, mm. you, you know, um, it didn't feel like you had to, you, well, you didn't have to wear anything different and you could just relax. And But you know what was really interesting? And we meant, I mentioned this to you kind of off the podcast just last week, genuinely hand on heart, and it's going to sound really sad, and some people listening and watching will probably laugh at me, but... I'm not good at football, as I've said already. I'm not good at all. I didn't really have the right stuff to wear. I've got a football shirt. I didn't have boots. I've got some on order. I've not even got shin pads. I was genuinely quite nervous about football last week because I'm not good. I know most lads here are good or certainly better than me. So going to play football, I mean, I don't know. I wasn't like petrified, but it was a bit like, oh, I'm a bit, a bit, a bit nervous for this. Obviously, when I go play golf, I'm very, very really nervous about, maybe it's about how I play, but not about the actual going to play. Because I've been to that many golf courses, I know how to walk around a golf club, I know the rules, I know the etiquette, I know what to expect, I know that in reality, I'm not going to embarrass myself too much. But going to another sport and feeling that little bit of nerves makes me realise again how much people will feel like going to play golf. Like if you've not played golf before or only once or twice, 10 years ago and a friend says to you, do you want to go to the driving range? Well, that's quite easy, but most driving ranges are fun and there's no, you know, you don't feel too intimidated, I wouldn't imagine. But going to a golf course can feel But I don't, I almost don't know how you'd eradicate that because even, let's say, joking aside, it was, it's it's fresh in our memory, so we, we're talking about it quite a bit, but when we did do football last week and we, we arrived at the venue, it's like we didn't quite know what we were doing. We mm-hmm. didn't know, you know, she said that you're on pitch number two. When we got to pitch number two, there were some there were some young lads there and we were like, well, is it us? Is it not us? We got told that we could come on early and they're on our football pitch. Are we allowed to kick them off? We're not. Um, <laughs> we kicked them we off. We did kick them off. Uh, no, I think they were they were just messing about but like i don't know if it if any capacity you could almost make it seamless where it's almost like there's no level of of question marks around it and and you're right probably golf is even more like let's say you let's say you get to a golf course and you have a tea time for 11 10 mm-hmm. okay and you arrive there at half 10 at 11 10 sorry 10 past 11 yeah okay and you arrive there at half 10 you go to the driving range maybe grab a butty or whatever gets the first team there's like three or four groups but you don't know well it's five past 11 now is it me up next is it not me up next like you don't always really know do you You know no but i think you're right but i think a lot of that can come from a good pro because obviously you should always really check into the pro shop before you play if you get tough pros hi guys have you been here before Uh, no okay great let me show you the first tee you're out next or these guys these members are out first like i think that good experience Mm. can help but equally if that was a bad experience if you're already nervous about going to a golf club and you get treated by a pro or a member of staff who's not super welcoming that could only imagine that could add to the nerves yeah yeah but, it's, it, it, it's interesting because you almost do have to put yourself we've lived in golf we've talked about this a lot on the podcast mm. we you know we both started playing golf retrospectively when we were about i, I was 11 you were a bit younger Seven, weren't you? eight but we've kind of grown up li- knowing what the etiquette is like you say sometimes when you put yourself in a different sport and, mm. I, and i've joked again on this podcast i've tried a, a million different sports over the last few years but you put yourself in that position you're like what do i do yeah. like this is this is different but you kind of learn it and figure it out pretty quickly i'm just suppose that's what people in golf have to do it's just mm. like say as, as little barriers as possible is the key yes this podcast today it's a bit of a sandwich no is it even a sandwich no it's not a sandwich really it's more of a 50 50 well i'm i'm thinking that might actually go separate now okay so let's right. keep rolling oh okay well first things first people who <laughs> are regular listeners on tuesday morning may have been blindsided by a little friday treat we had mm. so on friday if you've listened if you listen to it you'll know what we're talking about if not let us fill you in on friday a podcast went live where rick sat down with the guys from how ridiculous who are genuinely one of the biggest youtube channels in the world coming out of australia do some crazy cool videos but one thing they have done which he spoke about on the podcast they have filmed with your friend of mine, Eldrick Tont. 
Tiger Woods. Your friend of mine. <laughs> He's my friend. Yeah. So the guys from How Ridiculous, uh, you know, hopefully you enjoyed that podcast. It was a little bit different uh, in the sense that obviously they're not a golf channel, but they love golf. They really do. Uh, but their channel in its own right, 19.6 million subscribers, I believe they've got. Um, some of the videos they've got on there have got billions of views. Did they laugh at your channel? It, it, <laughs> yeah, it's like a, I showed it. I was like, normally when I bring YouTube channels into here, I'm quite proud of our space. Yes, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, swag around. This is our editing studio. This is, uh, this is, you can touch it if you want. This is the million plaque. All that, that whole thing with dust on. This Don't is the million that. plaque and uh, this is our podcast studio. But, Genuinely, I was quite you know nervous about them coming in because I was thinking they were mad, but actually they were blown away by our setup. Like yeah. I feel like you know <clears throat> our professionalism of how we edit and how we go through things. They were like, "Whoa!" Not taken aback that like <laughs> it doesn't show it on the channel. As in, like they were just quite. They were very very impressed of our setup and how we do things. And it was their first ever podcast. They'd never done a podcast wow. before. Um, and like I say, for me personally, I've I've genuinely been a massive fan of their channel for years. Well, that is true. Cause you. You um, showed me them. And I've ago. always wanted to do some sort of collaboration with them. And we got an email out of the blue. I've, I've always been in little chats on Instagram, etc. And out of blue, they sent me a message saying, we're over coming over to the UK. We've got this wild idea, idea that we'd love you to be involved in. I'm like, okay. Basically, there's a company over here in the UK. I think, was it Leeds Way or Huddersfield Way? Huddersfield, I think, rings a bell. They send inanimate objects up to space, like mm-hmm. quite literally attach them to these massive balloons. Yeah. And dangling from the balloons they have like this setup where they have the all these gopro cameras around said object so it might be it might be a, a um a, a football boot that someone's launching how much how much if this become a football podcast or what it <laughs> plays five aside once <laughs> <laughs> it might be you know a couple of wedding rings that people want to send up to space and then come back down or whatever but how ridiculous had this idea of sending up three golf balls up to space and and they did so they went all the way up to space all the way up however many feet miles light years <laughs> if that's how they measure things up in space and all the vid- all the video was captured where you've got these literally three golf balls and um, they had a, the three callaway golf balls all on tees and they had these the video is perfect you can see mm. the outline of the globe it's absolutely amazing and then once it gets to a certain point the balloons pop and said objects come straight back down to earth okay and they roughly know where the objects are going to land within mm. some sort of a radius yeah. right and they always try and land it in some sort of safe place whether at farmer's field or whatever it may be and we were trying to land it near a golf course this is their their video idea and you see these the the cameras are rolling all the time and we had these um navigation coordinates to where these where these golf balls were going to land we're following them around it's like dead exciting dead like where they were like looking up to the sky where these golf balls going to land it was a really nice uh sunny day actually back in september so we're flying down there we're chasing them after and we realise that the, the balls have landed, okay? Mm-hmm. They've land, They've come back onto planet Earth after being all the way up in space. They're back on planet Earth. And we're searching around and we find them. And, and we're near these massive open fields, near this golf course, massive open fields, right? These bloody golf balls end up in a tree. <laughs> like quite literally in a pig farm. Like my golf balls. <laughs> yeah. In a pig farm, in a tree. So they had to talk to the guys from the pig farm it was like this biochemical pig farm it was a bit weird and we got in and they actually allowed us to go up in like a forklift truck to pull mm. the golf balls back down again we took a free drop into like nearer to a golf course and we and we played from there it was a bit mad really a bit of a crazy idea and the video's gone out and it, it's Doing such well. it's such a good video like from from sometimes what's funny like when obviously we're out shooting a video a lot of um Sometimes when you're out shooting a video, you're thinking, "Is this is this good? Is it got the right atmosphere? Is 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 the lighting good? Is is this the good video?" Mm-hmm. And sometimes you don't really know. And many times you and you and I have left shoots and gone, "I'm not sure if that was our best video. I'm not sure if that was great or this that, and the other." And then the, the wonderful editing team, you know, work their magic on it, make it dramatic, add a bit of music, change the colouring, whatever it may be, make me look slimmer and taller. You can polish a turd, is what we're saying here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, obviously the final product is normally pretty pretty special, pretty good. I was on that How Ridiculous shoot and thinking to myself, how the hell are they going to turn this into a video? Because it was a really, really, really long day. We're chasing these bloody golf balls around. We're speaking to different golf courses and all this. And all this was filmed. Yeah. 
and it just got condensed to like a 15 minute yeah. video that was like really, so snappy the edit. really really good but honestly if you knew matt was on shoot if you didn't know and all that went into that shoot it was madness it was like one of the most challenging complex shoots i've ever been on and the fact they actually got of it it wouldn't surprise me if they rang me one day and said rick i'm really sorry mate the space video didn't quite work out yeah and the and you know they scrapped it but the to turn the video into that it was special so it was really cool um i'm hoping to do something again with them in the future um you know i'd love to plan an australia trip at some point and go meet up with those guys uh, but it was really interesting chatting to those um the guys from how ridiculous because they've really only got themselves to speak to because a lot of big YouTube channels are in America or, or the UK. Mm. And the same where they live in uh, Australia, was it Perth? I think it was, yeah. Where they live in Australia, there's just no other like big YouTube channels around. So they can't like, they can't just, you know, chat and chat YouTube and chat shop with people where you, me and those guys were in the uh, hit studio oh, for yeah. a few hours just chatting YouTube for ages, which was fascinating. Um, so yeah, I'm glad everyone enjoyed that. And then this Friday as Gary mentioned before we were actually going to tag on to the end of this uh, of this podcast today uh, an interview or a chat a casual chat that I had with Seb who was on the last break 75 video yep. in Germany once we're in Germany we actually got some time at the Mercedes-Benz Museum and we sat down we actually just chatted about golf and this year because me and Seb have had some crazy crazy adventures this year and basically we sat down through that so that's actually going to go as a, as a shorter podcast maybe like a 30 minute podcast going to go out on Friday so if you are a not subscribed to the channel, YouTube channel, Rick Shields Golf Show, or the podcast on your favourite device, uh, favourite platform, whether it be Apple or Spotify or Google, whatever, make sure you are subscribed. Or YouTube because, now. Or YouTube now, because these little Friday specials just get chucked out there willy-nilly. Willy-nilly. And if you want to stay in that clubhouse, that uh, magical place, and that real... There's something... If you're in the clubhouse, you've achieved something in your life, but you have to stay in the clubhouse. You can't just be in it and then be out of it. So you have to listen to every single episode um it's so a way of life it is a way it's a vibe it's a mindset and you know when this merch lands very soon you want to be the clubhouse person we're rocking the clubhouse merch we can't stop you buying it if you're not in the clubhouse but can you live with you could you live with yourself having a clubhouse head cover if you weren't actually in the clubhouse no no i couldn't but if people want to buy it and they're not that's fine yeah, that's also <laughs> buy, buy two, buy three. um also a little sneaky for you guys for you guys on the podcast okay you might spot a little bit of merch in the uh, Dunstan Borough Castle yes. Golf Club video. Just letting you know, just keep it, keep an eagle eye out. You might spot a few bits. Is it a coincidence that I was using some of the new, soon to be released Rick Shields merch and I played all my best rounds in a long time? I think it was your best round ever, was it? I was not? up there, genuinely was up there. <laughs> uh, my putter was on fire and I used to put a head cover. Oof. That's a bit weird. That weird. I used a Rick Shields head cover and my putting was really good. Hmm coincidence I he thinks think not, not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you also had a Rick Shields towel and you Get know your clubs ridiculously clean chipping in left right and centre left right and centre yeah well all centre actually but I don't want to brag <laughs> um, but no keep your eyes on that that's coming very very soon and then the actual <laughs> I'm talking weird I don't about know. merch the break 75 in Germany was actually really good again that was a weird video because the mist of that morning we didn't think we were going to be able to film that morning and it lift the, the, the mist lifted I made a double bogey on the first. Standard. Which a lot of people are like, here he is. Yeah, he's, back. he's here. Yeah. His the, golf game. The show. The circus is in town. <laughs> you went to a circus the other day, didn't you? I did. I went, I went double bogey, bogey for the first three. So I was four over through three. Nice. Standard. But then the grit, the determination came out and the, the dog inside me kept growling. The chihuahua. The chihuahua. So that video went out, played very well, played solid. Seb played really, really well. Shot under par. It's funny though, Seb got a lot of, a lot of criticism about his golf swing. Mm. And isn't it interesting how people kind of see golf swing techniques, etc. Because Seb is a very, very, very good player. His short game is ridiculous. And he doesn't hit it far, his own account. He's not the tallest person in the world. He, and he kind of just gets it out there, but always puts it in play. But he, he, the criticism of his technique was crazy. Yeah. A lot of uh, a lot of nasty people I out think, there. You know what? I, I don't want to defend those people because it's ridiculous. Leaving negative comments on a YouTube video in itself is a bit over the top. But I think there is something about someone that's good at a sport that doesn't do it in the most textbook way. It can either be loved or hated, if that makes sense. And I, again, Seb is a great kind of two handicap golfer, gets out there, getting very good, like you said, around the green, so fair play. But like when I see a, a PJ Tour player or a major champion who doesn't swing it orthodoxly, 
Is that the right word, orthodox? So yeah, for some reason, I don't like it. I was never a fan of Bubba. Because really? Yeah, I don't know what it is. He, he was lefty, which I'm not always a huge fan of for some reason. Sorry, lefties, I don't know what it is. But the, weirdly, I do like left-footed footballers. But anyway, yeah. I don't know. But yeah, his swing was so unorthodox. His shape was so unorthodox. I didn't really like it. What I, about Jim Furyk? Again, not really liking it. Matt Wolf, Not liking it. I'm, I'm very much in the camp of I love Tiger. I love Adam, Adam Scott. Scott. Rory, where it looks so, so good. But, yeah, I don't know. Are you on the same page or not? I don't know. For me, often, where I, where I get a little bit unstuck with the tour pros swinging like that is mad respect for those guys not um, becoming convinced to change the swing yes. and the technique. Like, surely, along those times and periods, like Bubba Watson, you look, Bubba's famously never had a golf lesson and you look at Bubba and, and he's rise up to up to stardom and, and imagine him being like a 16 17 year old kid and he's he's like the new up and coming talent and you're surprised that he, he doesn't come to any pressure of a golf coach or somebody going oh no you need to change all this this is never going to work yeah. out on tour you're never going to win a major swinging like that do you know what i mean absolutely but how can they almost blank that out similar to like jim Furyk, matt wolf obviously does does actually use a golf uh, George Gankus and almost that's the to some degree the exaggerated version of of uh, Matt Wolf swing is something that George actually is a big fan of um but it's surprising that not more I mean Matt Wolf has report you know um very famously this year's not not performed on live and Brooks Kepke's on Brooks Kepke's team and Brooks Kepke wants him out and all the you know there's obviously a fallout there but I wonder how much of it does play on your mind when you've got when you've not got the most ortho, ortho, uh, orthodox swing, when it's not going well, like, what do you change? Like, what do you, you know, it's very mm. difficult. You, you, there must be times where Bubba Watson or Jim Furyk or, you know, all these guys who've had more or, unorthodox swings are going, it's not working. I need to almost change everything. But they never have, have they? Well, that's the thing. And I think if you always separate the two, like you said, the story of it and the background versus the actual look of it, like you said, you, you've got to respect those guys that they have got these crazy swings, but yet they've done so well. But to watch it, I'm not always a fan. But I also think, and again, you'll know more about this than, than me, but with the evolution of obviously Trapman and GC Quad and the way pros are actually teaching now, and it being so much more about actually delivery of the golf club rather than how it looks in a camera, yeah, we're seeing more what we'd class as weird swings. And I was just thinking then, I'd had to Google his name, the guy that won the, the British Amateur or the Amateur Championship this year, that Christo Lamprecht, he had a really bad kind of big dip, a tall guy really dipped into it, but smashes it miles and... I don't know how he'll go on his career. He did well to start the first couple of days in the Open and then fell away. But he won the Amateur Championship. An elite, elite, elite golfer with a swing that you wouldn't think he yeah. should have almost. I definitely think with the introduction, but this is where, again, going back to like Jim Furyk and, and Bubba Watson, those guys, you know what's quite interesting when you look at the timeline of golf coaching over the years, when I even when I very, very first started coaching, probably about 15 years ago now, video analysis wasn't a big thing no it wasn't super popular it was it was quite hard to find a golf coach with video analysis launch monitors were, were a thing of the of the future like that wasn't even like on people's radar yet pardon the pun and then, and then <laughs> <laughs> so so everything pre video camera i can imagine swings being quite funky and a bit different like you say because who's going to show them otherwise and mm. one of the main reasons why i got video camera when i first coached i was coaching this guy who had this tremendously long back swing like stupidly long and he did really need to fix it and he just wouldn't believe me that it was long and i had to hire a video camera to video him to show him his, his swing was that long and he yeah. almost didn't believe me he couldn't believe that it was that long and video analysis was so useful to be able to show people right this is what you feel you doing but this is the reality let's see if we can make some changes here but always focusing on results not mm. just to make the swing look pretty always focusing on results um and and but so pre-video cameras i can imagine where where there was a few funky swings like a jim furick etc but like through bubba watson's era he would have been definitely grown up in the in the era of um of video cameras but he still continues to swing the way he was. And then it's been a very short window, really. And then launch wants to become so, so big. It's almost made video cameras obsolete. Mm. Like there's not many guys. Well, there still will be, obviously. But you go on a driving range now at a tour venue. 
what's almost every single golfer along the line got they've either got a gc quad a trap man etc and they're always looking at launch monitor data and they're always looking at delivery or whatever it may be numbers launch angle spin rates distance etc feeling those numbers whatever it may be certainly in a tournament you don't see that many people behind with a with a camera no, obviously it's, it's all on phone now which it's just makes more lot, to yeah it's almost more to double check it really on camera now or they kind of post it on social media but it goes to, back to this kind of idea that impact is the most important factor correct like how that club hits the ball it doesn't know how it went up it doesn't know how it came down um impact is the key and even seb mentioned a co- <laughs> i think he replied to a couple of people he's, he's had a, a back injury which also prevents him from turning and rotating the way that he would be more desirable um but all in all i think technique all that matters is how that ball flies to the hole. Correct. But those, those comments, though, of people that are giving him a hard time, which is, again, ridiculous. It comes from a level of jealousy because people might believe their golf swing is better looking than Seb. And it might be, you know, in terms of visually. But the fact that Seb, who doesn't hit a long way, is shooting these really good scores and is such a good golfer, I think it might rub some people up the wrong way, which is a bit pathetic. But uh, anyway, we have had lots and lots of questions on the Facebook group. Um I think over the weekend, people who are in the Facebook group, to me, the family. Yeah. They're not just friends anymore. There's 100,000 100, people now who I class as family. Um, <laughs> I used to think, I used to class them as acquaintances. Then it kind of it stepped up to, to friends. And the more I think about it, I think, what would I do without 100,000 people? They mean the world to me. <laughs> do you agree? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> So uh, we've also found a new function on the group as well. We can kind of get out there a bit more and speak to you guys a bit more. So we want to get your questions as as much as we can. We want to answer as many as we can. And today we'll do just that. So Quick, quick fire ones or long ones. You fire them however length the fire deserves. <laughs> okay. um, the first one from William McCall. And it's a question I've seen a million times, but the question itself had 43 likes and it's quite fitting with what you've spoken about before with the How Ridiculous guys. Do you ever plan on coming to Australia, Rick? Wow. Not even to say that. I, so he basically said, do you ever plan on coming to Australia? But I thought for dramatic effect, it really emphasized the ever. Do you ever plan on coming to Australia? And what's he called? Uh, William McCall. William, if you go back far enough and then you're a Clubhouse member, so I'm sure you've gone back into every single back video, back archived video of nearly 2,200 videos on the channel. Because back in 2014, um, I did go over to Australia. You were 15, nine years, 2015. Why not? 2015 it was. Was it 15 or 14? Da, 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 da. 15. And went over to Australia. That was 2014, sorry. Or Are 15. You, oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> William <laughs> sat there at home with a notebook going, well, I need to know the answer to this. Was it 14 or 15, for Christ's sake? Um, Went over to, had a bit of a family trip um, over to Sydney and Brisbane, did a few other places as well. Took the video camera gear back in the day. Hard, I always remember this, right? It was back in the day where, obviously, I was filming most of it myself back in like 14, 15. Was it 14 or 15? Can we put this out? <laughs> doesn't, matter, so doesn't matter, I was joking, doesn't matter. Doesn't I matter. was born in 14 and we went when she was six months old, so it was March 2015. Thanks. I've got that. Was she born? Yeah. So... <laughs> sure right. right we'll we'll call it 2015 william <laughs> thank you yeah so i had this bag this like duffel bag that was the heaviest duffel bag in the world so i had all my cameras in there tripods everything else that i carried at the time and uh i did this hand luggage tried to get that on the plane and everything we got it on the plane anyway i did film in australia i filmed in sydney i played at new south wales with scott arnold Oops. if you look at that video back in the day it's one of when one of the main reasons that video was why I didn't get my legs out on camera for about four years, five years after. Why? Because they were, they, they, everyone was saying they were like out of bounds posts. And I wore these green, weirdly, green checkered shorts. They were awful. I know. And I played in New South Wales with Scott Arnold, who was the num- one of the number one amateurs in the world back in the day. Filmed at a few other places in Brisbane with um, Golf Reviewer, his name was back mm. in the day. What's it, is that? Aussie Golf Review. Aussie it? Golf Review. Oh, it was Brisbane Golf Review at the at the first. Um, so I did a bit of filming there and then also filmed at a magnificent place called Hamilton Island, which was one of the best golf clubs I've played in my life. So I have been. But yeah, go, to answer your question, William. Yeah, to answer the question. Uh, soon. Yeah, okay, soon. Within the next three years. Yeah, okay, great. <laughs> um, so we've had a good one that comes on to the topic, a little bit of this LA golf ball we mentioned at the start of the episode from Anthony... 
Vitozzi, I think it is. It's quite a cool surname. I think that's how you say it. Can I get your opinions on golf ball fittings? Do you think it's worth it? I think you can fit yourself a lot of time for golf balls. So for, for me, golf ball testing needs to happen around the green to start things off. Do you like putting with the golf ball? Do you like chipping with it? Do you, when you chip with it, do you see the type, right type of spin when it lands? And then from that, yes, you can get onto a launch monitor. Um, I, know, I know Bridgestone back in the day used to do a really in-depth ball mm. fitting. I'm not sure if they do, and tightly still do, where you'll hit that particular golf ball off with a launch monitor into a hitting net. So obviously you don't lose the golf balls. And it'll tell you which spin characteristics is more suited to your ball speed and your club head speed etc um but yeah i do think balls fitting is important but i don't think it's the the most important fitting out of all the fittings i would possibly put it as i'd go driver putter irons Irons, no driver putter wedges irons balls you'd put irons at the bottom yeah Wow. That's very controversial. Okay. Uh, well, how high would you put them? Irons number one. Wow. Modern okay. driver. Yeah. Because think about your irons. You use them so much. I had a set of irons once that were two degrees upright and I needed standard. The amount of shots I hit left or right was, well, left mostly was... And also, I always think as well, at what point do we determine a fitting? And what I mean by that is, if it takes the extreme, imagine if you had a novice golfer that never played golf and you gave them the tiniest, smallest blades ever. They'd be so much harder to hit than a big, chunky cavity. But well, I'll, I'll swap it around then. Just, I'll move it up one place. Okay, that's fine. Driver, um, putters, irons, wedges, ball. Mm. Okay, cool. Um, uh, question for me, what do you want for your lunch? Because I'm going to order it now. <laughs> do you know, baked potato. Yeah, beans, baked potato, please. Jack, do you want cheese no, as well? I'll have tuna. Tuna, tuna with cheese. Yeah. Tuna. This is good content. So you're having a tuna, cheese. Jacket potato. Please. Jacket. And beans, cheese jacket. Do you want anything, Matt? Tuna, cheese, panini, please. Beans. <laughs> you can keep the show going, Rick, while I do this. I've not got the questions in front of me. Sing. Tuna, uh, panini. How do you spell panini? There we go. <laughs> tuna. Uh, okay, next question. That was my question, Rick. You answered it very well. Uh, from Jimmy Alexander, what's your funniest story when giving a golf lesson? Oh, funniest. Christ. I, I think I remember one <clears throat> that was that was hilarious. I actually saved it as a clip, and I feel really bad for the guy, but I did show it to a lot of people. I never <laughs> aired it online. So when I was at Trafford Golf Centre, we used to have a video analysis, so you could obviously record people's swings, and you know you could save them onto a big server, and then next time they come into a lesson, you can see the difference between before and after. And pretty much every golf swing in a lesson was recorded. And this guy, bless him, he, you know, he's fairly new to golf, and he, I was saying, right, we need to work on the X, Y, and Z. Do a couple of practice swings near the ball. Not, not not at the ball Mm -hmm. just near it okay so he did a couple of practice swings and then before you know it his third practice swing he pretty much out the toe flushed this iron right yeah but very 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 much from the toe and in the old teaching bay back at trafford we used to have this metal shutter that used to go around the teaching bay and um he he hit the right post of that shutter (laughs) okay He's absolutely yeah. pelted at this right post. Everyone around the academy is like ducked and everything else. And then before you know it, it's hit that and then ricocheted straight back towards his... Um, gentleman's agreement. Gentleman's area. And it floored him. And I mean floored him. He hit the ground like a sack of spuds and he, he was out... He was out the count for at least five minutes um so i've got i had that video saved on my on my profile and i, and I probably showed every other lesson uh do you, do you want to see the video of the guy getting it by <laughs> getting the uh, wow someone someone's coming in going rick i've had a i've had a really bad you know week let me show you something that'll make you laugh <laughs> in so, this yeah. day and age that'll be against the gdpr probably so you yeah to share but 
Back in the day. Back in the day. You know, one of the things I still think was brilliant, and it's not well, I say brilliant, it was really funny, it wasn't brilliant for the people, but a couple of years ago when we were filming at the Marriott and there was a camera on you and there's a dad and son in a buggy. One was in a buggy and one was walking in front of the buggy and they both looked to see you filming. Obviously, must have watched the videos and both in awe. The dad stopped and the, the son ran over him in a buggy. Yeah, we've got that clip on that. Was, and we actually asked for permission to use we did. that. It could have, that could have been serious, that. Thankfully, it wasn't. It's like flattened him. It really did. That was really funny. Do you, the other funny story, and I think you were present, do you remember the time at Archfield when Nike was was releasing the last line of drivers? Yes. And we all, well, you were there, definitely. And me, Pete, got invited up there. And it was the first, literally the first hits of, of the Nike drivers. Like, no, mm-hmm. almost nobody in the planet, but maybe Tiger and Rory <laughs> hit these drivers, right? And we're hitting a few and warming up. And Pete goes, go on, let me hit one. And his very, very first shot with the blue Nike driver that had the kind of battery in the back. Yeah. He skied it. <sighs> It hit the shutter roof in the in the Archfield teaching bay and it left a big massive ball mark on top of this new brand new Nike driver. Oh my day. That was really funny. You know what that got me thinking of then? About how good golfers can still hit horrendous shots. I saw a tweet yesterday and I can't for the life of me remember who it was from. Which is annoying because I should have received it for this podcast. But it was basically on the lines of golfers who are like mid single figures, so like let's just say seven to nine, are almost in the most bizarre spot where they can have around close to level par, but they can equally have around in the early 90s. And it might be thinking that it's actually really true. Like, I feel like that's me. That I could literally go out and shoot a score that's not far off par, very not very often, admittedly, but then could easily have a shocker in the mid-80s. It's such a weird place to be, isn't it? Yeah, and people expect a lot of you. Yeah. As well. Yeah. I don't know. I, I wish I'd say, I'll fi- find the tweet maybe for another time. But um, one more question I've got for you. It's from a great name, and I hope it's his genuine name. Clement Joseph Biocomin, I think it is, or Bokomin or something. But either way, it's a, it's a good name. I enjoy the podcast, which is a great start to the uh, message. But. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you and Rick are fans of technology. But are the top tracer distances truly accurate? The driving range I go to occasionally has it. Um, I thought he meant he occasionally has top tracer, but I think he means the driving range he occasionally goes to has top tracer. And I'm not sure if I believe the distances. So um, first things on that, you are a top tracer ambassador. We love the technology, hence why you became an ambassador. Hit me. It's very live to the the situation you're hitting in. Yes. So if it's windy, if it's into wind... Shot trace, top tracer will show that the ball's not gone as far. Mm. Like, and if it's cold, the ball won't go as far. Um, for me, every all testing I've done with top tracer, I found it to be really, really accurate to the live data right there and then. Well, that's it. And I think as well on that, and I, I, I'm a culprit of this. I think most golfers are. I think we often think we hit it further than we do, but also the golf balls you're using aren't always quite as good as maybe a Pro V1 or something. So, if it doesn't seem quite as far, that might be why. But from when I've used them, it's very, very accurate. It's, it's, I would more question the, the circumstances more than the actual top tracer. Mm. I would I would question the golf ball more than I would question the top tracer. Well, I have been known occasionally, and I'm having a little go on longest drive at top tracer to uh, put a sneaky Pro V1 down. And it tracks it further, doesn't it? It does definitely track because it further. It's, because it's tracking that ball. Exactly. If you went to a driving range with every golf ball as premium, the numbers would be perfect. You'd like to think it's not this clear cut, but the driving ranges that are forward thinking ha- and have invested in technology like a top tracer are also the kind of driving ranges that like to regularly or regularly can swap the golf balls. But, but Yes, but sometimes driving ranges are restricted to how far golf True. balls, like they have to have 90% golf balls because of surrounding areas or they've not got enough land. Like Prairie, where I used to coach, used to have the yellow one-piece golf balls and they were, they were never going to fly as far. I think there is a way, though, in the top of software they can kind of calib- calib- calibrate. calibrate it. Um, Pre- pre-done? Yeah, I think so. Right. So that if they know they've got 90% ball, it will kind of account for that. Yeah. On the, so you might see it pitch at the 50-yard mark, for example, but it might actually say 60-yard because it's kind of counting that as being a real yeah. ball. Yeah, I, I, genuinely, I know um, question marks around any technology, but I, I, I 100% believe that Top Tracer tracking system is tracking the ball, the, that ball live in that environment, windy, cold, whatever it may be, and therefore, that actual shot was very, very accurate. Well, we've actually got a video we're going to be filming very soon, which might touch on some of this stuff. Definitely so, touch on it. Definitely does. Guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Mm. Are you going to say something I'll, else? All I was going to say was, um, 
before I said about how we very much value the people who are in the Facebook group and that, that goes out saying the people who will leave us a review on Apple, and Spotify, certainly Apple, they are the best of the best. So if you'd like to be considered as the best of the best, please leave us a review on Apple. Four or five star, ideally. Five only, really. We can tolerate four. Threes are where I find it a bit odd because threes a bit like, <laughs> like it, but don't. I'd rather us zero star or five. Let me oh. read. Let me read one of the late, latest podcast reviews. Oh, oh no! Live here on the Rich Shields the Show. Absolute podcast. very latest one, just to see. Yeah. Maybe read five for me. Keep it. Um, keep it. I don't need to go to even find them. I've got them. Yeah, I've got them. I want to read one. Okay, go on. You read one. How do you get into them? Go on podcasts. <laughs> yeah, this is a good learning tip. Go on the actual podcast. And then uh, if you, you scroll mean, down, do, so it's search, search for it. Search for the Rich right. Shields Golf Show. Click on the logo that you see that comes up. Yeah, I'm on. Scroll down a bit and there should be ratings and oh, you yeah. can either rate it yourself. Oh, wow, we're doing pretty well. Yeah, I know. Oh, my goodness. Oh, we've got nearly 3,000 ratings. Yeah, I know. Oh, don't worry, anyone. We've no, got, we've got no, enough. We want more. We've got literally more, more than enough. Right, Thursday. Um... Yeah, let me vet them first. Oh, they're, all, they're all nice. Easily the snowy, entertaining golf show. What does that mean? In the world, it's a must listen, like Top Gear in the 90s, but thankfully without Clarkson. Wow. <laughs> we, they had Clarkson, we've got Jarnock. <laughs> um, easily, oh, I want to I wanna read the actual headline there. Um, funny and informative, great for product news and general golf news. Oh, let me find a, a bad one. Yeah, I couldn't find them on my laptop as well, the bad ones. There isn't any. Don't leave a bad one. They're literally really positive. Yeah, Thanks, everyone. That's really nice of you. It's considering we've had 2,409 ratings. Mine says 2,904. Is that not what I just said? You said 2,409, didn't you? Oh, 2,904. Oh, right, yeah. That's I read it yeah. wrong. Um, out of five star, we've got 4.9. That's, I'm happy with that. Thanks, everyone. So do you want any more? Then no, you're saying, oh, wow. I think we're good. Because I think it can only go worse. What about, <laughs> what about, he, hear me out, hear me out. This is a big one. Hear me out. Hear me out. I'm hearing you. <laughs> hear me out. Go on to Apple Podcasts, people. If you've not got Apple Podcasts, maybe borrow your partner's phone or a friend's phone. Leave us a five-star review, okay? Screenshot that five-star review, okay? So you've got, Love the podcast. Rick's good. Guy's brilliant. Whatever you want to put. Well, I'm not putting words in your mouth. Send it then to Rick's Twitter or to me or to Instagram or to the Rick Shields Golf Show podcast page. We will <laughs> then collate those, okay? And we'll pick somebody to have a piece of merch exclusive, Rick. A piece of unreleased merch absolutely exclusively shipped to them. Wow. Can we do that, please? Yes. So either email it to us, podcastrickshields.com, send it to Rick's Twitter, to my Twitter, to the podcast group, wherever you want to send it, make sure it gets to us as evidence. Our email's been funny recently. But it's barely back at work here. Yeah. And we will then pick somebody. We'll announce it next week. We will then, I was going to say hand deliver it. We won't hand deliver it, but we'll post it to Unless said person. Local. Unless they live local, within a 25-minute radius of Marriott Worthy Park. And we will. Somebody will win it. That's amazing. That these are really. I thought you were nice. saying the prize was amazing. Love these comments. Did you ever check it? No. I didn't know you could find it. Oh, well. these are really nice, everyone. Thank you. If I ever feel bad, this one I'm going to read. <laughs> Rick's tonight sat in the, sat on the couch at half eleven, eating a big thing of Hagen Dazs, feeling sorry for himself. <laughs> I was going to tell you what. Look at the reviews. Next thing, he just <laughs> breaks into a into his gym clothes, starts running down the uh, the road, putting a ten miles in, feeling on top of the world. Thanks to these comments. Oh, these are, honestly. Really okay, nice. well, um, let's stop um, looking at our own reviews. <laughs> um, how often do you Google yourself? Uh, probably not enough. You do search on YouTube, though. Yeah, only because so people, if people are making nasty videos about me, all good videos. Let me. I'm going to search myself now on YouTube, see what comes up. And probably your own channel, I'd imagine. <laughs> but then, if you go and search upload date, but what? But why do you do that to yourself? Does not have it. If you do see a bad video, does it not make you feel bad? No. It's push me harder. <laughs> Gets that dog in me. What would be the? the bear. What would be the worst thing you could see? Uh, my nudes being leaked. 
Yeah, that would, yeah, yeah, they aren't great. <laughs> Nobody wants to see them. I only sent them to you. Guy. They'll I be bigger. I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't think you'd be forwarding it to everyone. Yeah. But a bit like Top Tracer, the weather affects performance. Yeah. I thought there. you'd be rocking a 460cc head, and it's definitely not that. It's more like a three wood. <laughs> You can use it, admittedly. It's fine. I it's more like a mini driver. Right, guys, thanks for, thanks for listening. That was a weird ending. Thanks for listening. Hopefully, you stay tuned. Lots more to come. I'll see you next week. Plenty of reviews. Oh, you've made and my a bit day, of merch everyone. for one lucky winner. Peace.